Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with, Ez I keep saying Ezra, Nehemiah chapter 5. It is right before Ezra, uh, bleh. Ezra's right before Nehemiah, so I can see why I keep mixing the two up. I was, and Ezra's a short book, I just got out of it. Anyway, Nehemiah chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 1. And there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against their Jewish brethren. For there were those who said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore let us get grain that we may eat and live. There were also some who said, We have mortgaged our lands and vineyards and houses that we might buy grain because of the famine. I'll just go ahead and read verse 4 as well. There were also those who said, We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And indeed we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves, and some of our daughters have been brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I became very angry when I heard their outcry and these words. After serious thought, I rebuked the nobles and rulers and said to them, Each of you is exacting usury from his brother. So I called a great assembly against them. And I said to them, According to our ability, we have redeemed our Jewish brethren who were sold to the nations. Now indeed, will you even sell your brethren? Or should they be sold to us? Then they were silenced and found nothing to say. Then I said, What you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? I also, with my brethren and my servants, am lending them money and grain. Please let us stop this usury. Restore now to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive groves, and their houses. Also a hundredth of the money and the grain, the new wine and the oil that you have charged them. So they said, We will restore it, and will require nothing from them. We will do as you say. Then I called the priests and required an oath from them that they would do according to this promise. Then I shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out each man from his house and from his property who does not perform this promise. Even thus may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. Then the people did according to this promise. We have a man in power who's dealing very specifically with, um, with the things of life, with property and with food. And even though he's in a position of power, even though he has money and servants, he's making sure to look out for his brethren. He's making sure to look out for the people who are not as well off as him, who are in need. I don't usually do a uh, social justice video. And I'm certainly not some social justice warrior. Um, a lot of the things they stand for, I do not stand for. But as far as treating those under you fairly... I want to say right now to anyone who has authority over people in regards to a living situation or in regards to food and the distribution thereof, do justly. Restore justice if need be. Honor the weak. Help the fallen. And definitely don't take advantage of people who are in those tough spots. If, any, if you can do nothing then keep your peace and be silent. And if you can do something, don't hurt them. Don't take more than you should help them. It's a rare, unfortunately, example when someone in authority does something out of their way. Like he not only said, we're going to stop the usury. By the way, usury is when... <clears throat> is interest. It's when you charge a little bit more than the original cost, that way you make money. It does say in the Law of Moses not to exact your usury on your brethren. Regardless of the Law of Moses, regardless of the Old Testament, and regardless of whether it's usury or the price set, make sure not to take advantage of people if you're in a position of authority to do so. And if you're, and if you're, I'll say, and for those of you who are not in those positions of authority, keep in mind one day you may be, I, that may sound a little bit ridiculous, like, who am I? I'm never going to be in a position like that. You don't know where the Lord's going to take you in life. You may not even know all the um, talents that you have at the moment. There's no telling where you may be and how well you may do. And if you get to that point when you have authority over others, don't extract more from them than they can give. Don't take advantage of the power that you have. Help those people.
especially, especially if you're in a position where what you're doing determines their livelihood, their food, their water, their home, the clothes on their back. Don't take advantage of those things because there is a God who feeds you, waters you, clothes you, and shelters you. And just as he's given, he can take away. In Nehemiah's prayer at the very end, so may God shake out each man from his house and from his property who does not perform this promise. Even thus may he be shaken out and emptied. He wanted justice. He wanted to help those who needed it. So if you're in that position, and for those of you who are not, but who knows, one day you may be, help those people. Help them. Do what you can to be of assistance. Yeah, you've got to live. If you have to give up a little bit of your luxury, I'm not asking you, I'm, I wouldn't ask anyone to take the food out of the mouths of their own children or their own mouth or their, or, or their own wives' mouth. I wouldn't ask you to, to deprive your family, but if you've got some excess, if you have a little bit of luxury, I will ask you to sacrifice a little bit of that. I absolutely will do that. So, a bit, bit of a heavy topic tonight, but that's what I read in the Bible, and when I read that, I'm just like, Oh, that, that, it just, it really hit my heart hard. So, wanted to issue forth a little, uh, an encouragement, uh, a little exhortation, and a warning, if need be, because God certainly does hear the cries of the fallen and the weak and the downcast. He certainly hears their prayers and he will certainly answer them. So, may us, may we all keep that in mind, because those of us, well, I'm not downcast at the moment. I have been. But those who were downcast, maybe one day they will not be. Um, not that I have a position of authority um, or anything like that to in, in affect someone's home or livelihood, but I'm better off than I was. And if God keeps on growing me, I want to keep this in mind. It's important. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.